start it. Can you hear the audio? The in-game audio as well? Uh, nothing so far. Wait, I can hear it, I can hear it. I just put a low volume, I believe. Yeah. Great. One thing I like to say is uh, checking out your team's loadouts. See who has guns, who doesn't have guns. Coming down. <laughs> One going back, CD. Let's see, what did you buy? We bought. Light armor and a smoke? I bought two smokes, one molly and half okay. shield. Molly, okay. Personally, I really like buying stim beacons over molly. Especially if your team's five stack like this, like... One round. Imagine if on this execute here, one going you back pop the smokes, okay. and then right here you throw a stim, right? You stim basically your whole team. Yeah. Compared yeah. to this molly, the molly's okay, being like... The thing is, you already smoke screens, so you're not really expecting them to push screens anyways. Hmm. And now Sage is gonna wall it, so now it's like, you really don't have to worry about it at all. Oh, I expected her to wall heaven, but I don't know why. Okay, so if I guess it's doing okay. Personally, I would put the smoke a little bit deeper, because one thing that could, could happen yeah. is that someone could be inside Alba right now, and they can like hmm. play around your smoke, where like, they... They peek sight, get a kill, and then they retreat to elbow and retreat through the smoke like to safety, right? But if you put the <clears> smoke further into screens, now if they try to make the same play, they're stuck in elbow, then they're not going to be able to escape from elbow. They'll basically be like forced to commit. Yeah. My mistake was I didn't take Brimstone's range into account there. I thought I had enough space there to like, you know, place a smoke. I realized that I should have just come forward and placed my smoke, you know, inside. Like, I usually do that with Omen. Yeah. So, Brim Smokes don't have that great of a range. So, what would you have to do is yeah. like, go into this corner to, to your right before you can actually reach screens. So, what would be a better loadout for attacking, per se? Like, three smokes, a uh, sim beacon? Personally, I like to skip the molly. Unless, you have, unless you're specifically planning to, to do some sort of molly lineup, like stim beacon and more smokes is generally better, because the yeah. smokes are cheap. Stim beacon is cheap, but Molly is like pretty expensive. True, true. So three smokes, one stim beacon, and half shield would be a good combo. Yeah. Even what I like to do is that sometimes I buy two stim beacons and two smokes. Yeah. Uh, this was one of my first games as Brimstone actually, so I wasn't really sure what to do. I was keeping the same defense and attack lineup, like okay. same defense and attack stuff. Okay. Like usually, I just smoke out that and you know put long. I know that's it. For the molly. Oh, back Okay, so let's see next round. Koi mid jana chahte? Looks like team Kushiro. I like it. I don't like how you didn't pull by though. Koi mid jana chahte? Here you can get a, a second stim beacon. You should always be, basically always have all your utility except maybe molly because it's expensive, but. Always have all your smokes every round, always have your Austin beacons every round because they're cheap and really valuable. <laughs> no. Unless you're specifically saving for something, but. Yeah. These are interesting smoke. We'll see how it plays out. But uh, what I like to do here throw a Austin beacon and then grab the orb. Because you already have so many people entering on site. You necessarily need a fourth person to go with them. You've kind of already yeah. done your job to some extent. You can spend a few seconds, grab your orb, and then rejoin your team. Okay. Okay, now we can talk about why smoke. the heaven smoke is bad. It's a bad smoke. The smoke here smokes hell. Oh, okay, okay. Ah. It doesn't actually smoke heaven, so actually when you peeked here, heaven was wide open. 
heaven is wide open right here. And now yeah, that was a bad smoke. Yeah, now your jet is like forced to fight the person at heaven, and then the smoke is not helping her at all. And she tosses her away, but she's blocked by the wall and she dies. Like here, this would be a great opportunity to throw another stim beacon, and so that your team is not so afraid to push out. You can get get stimmed and then easily win one v ones or win two v twos or whatever the case may be. Heaven. Okay, what do you think about this? It's a smoke? bad smoke. It's a bad smoke. Heaven. Why do you just smoke this? I I don't know why I smoked that at that moment. Okay. That smoke helped them a lot. They just yeah, easily exactly. pushed him to side. See, he's hiding. He's hiding inside your smoke. Yeah. He's taking advantage of it. Okay. It was a horrible smoke. I don't know why I smoked that even in the first place. Like my initial decision was, should I smoke crafters or should I smoke, you know, CT? CT smoke is fine. Uh, yeah. Crafters yeah, smoke is kind of situational. Yeah. Usually I would <laughs> smoke heaven, but also your sage walled for entry, so I would I would consider even smoking heaven like later instead of at the beginning yeah. of the entry. So like, let me go back to that to explain why. So like. Your team is in the garage, your team is about to entry, the entry happens, and then when the, the point of the sage wall going going up here is so that your team does not have to worry about heaven, except for your jet who decides to challenge heaven for no reason, like by yourself. Like if you guys hug uh, close they like to- they peak even just by going back a bit? They, they can peek from heaven, right? What do you mean? Uh, like if I imagine, I, if I smoked, uh, like wouldn't I still need to smoke that? No, this is this is what the sage wall is for. The sage oh, okay. wall blocks the entire right side of, of like this cross here. <laughs> but so I really don't need yeah. to smoke that at the sage uh, walls. Yeah, I would I would oh. delay smoke it because heaven's not important at the beginning. Where this is like the beginning of the entry. The <laughs> more you want heaven is more important later when you get to back with B site. So for example. When Rainer is here, now Rainer is afraid to peek out because when he peeks out, he's going to be exposed to multiple angles, including heaven. Right? This here, the sage wall won't help him. But for you, like, look at your position. You're hugging the, the sage wall. Therefore, you you have zero worry about someone coming from heaven. You have zero worry about someone on the other side of this wall. But again, this is only if you are hugging the wall. If you're not hugging the wall like this. Here. Yeah, if you're going from the back side, they can easily peek you there. Yeah, you can actually peek heaven, but then that also means that they can also see you. <laughs> Just like that for like a split second there. But as long as you hug the wall, like here you're hugging the wall, then you're, you're perfectly safe. Okay. Throw the slow Okay, loadouts, everybody has guns. First thing what I like to do, oh actually I skipped the whole round, that's why. Yep. Oh, wait, that was the round, okay never mind. We won first round, we lost the second round. Yeah, we won the pistol round, but then we lost the second round. Yeah. I think they have four spot, I believe. First thing what I like to do is, is when I see my whole team like always spying like this, especially on on uh, on attack, what I'll do is that I'll actually like sort of like half buy because I'll I'll play for teammates to like play off with their gun so that if they if they get a kill with the specter, then I can pick up whoever they just killed. Yeah, but if they yeah. die, I'll trade them out and I'll pick up the specter. Okay. Or I can do something like a custom map that becomes like much lower risk because my loadout is cheaper. It doesn't really matter if I if I die. I won't really be giving up any special guns or anything. 
just something to consider maybe not in this specific scenario but we'll see if it comes up again so firstly a better option would be to buy a full loadout and just half shield or full shield and then wait if one of the teammate dies or you know kills someone yeah so basically playing the economy game and playing frugally because yeah. it's not always needed that everybody has to have a gun all the time every single round because most of the time your team's not going to really be able to afford that um, what you want to do is try to minimize um, eco rounds as much as possible because eco rounds are really, really bad where like if nobody has a gun then now your team is like almost guaranteed to lose the rounds and now you have to like play for other goals instead yeah <laughs> I don't really like the smoke because your team is not really actively pushing through mid. Right here, Ray's was probably peeking into ramen already. Or we slash market, whatever you guys want to call it. I like to call it ramen. But you put yeah. the smoke down, but nobody's actively going to push into mid right now. So your yeah. smoke is not really useful. Hmm. Until 5 seconds later, 10 seconds later. Okay, now it's been six. Well, I'm gonna mute myself for a bit. So now, seven, seven seconds later, now your smoke is like half the duration has been wasted. Now your team's actually gonna work through mid. And now your smoke is useful. But now your smoke is only gonna last another five seconds. Mm -hmm. Also, this smoke this is only smoking hell. Again, your smoke lands exactly where your, your mouse is pointing at, which is your pointing at hell. See, now you now need to put another smoke. Because your first smoke was too early. Stage a little bit too far ahead. What you could have done maybe was be closer to her. Which yeah, I should have just stepped to and faded her out at least. I was distracted by the smoke going down there. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let's see where were they? They were in male, I think. Yeah, she was. They were, she was in male. Wait, wait. So now there's two in B heaven. You might even consider working toward A at this point because you technically you do have mid control. Maybe not yeah. full, full mid control, but like you could go either way. You can go toward B, you can go toward A. And because you have Arena who's already looking at A main, I would consider just like dropping through vents, maybe like slow pushing vents, like being quiet first so they, they expect you to still be mid instead of hard stopping through vents. <laughs> Looks like your Cypher has the same idea, that's why he's caging to cross. Yeah. But then you kind of molly off where you, where he wants to go. It seems like he back. wants to go for A. Yeah. So it's a go full run. Yeah, I call it was a full run A. Yeah, so imagine if, like, this whole time here, instead of mollying it off, you just, like, push through vents. Then you can like regroup yeah. your arena. If there was somebody in a heaven, you guys can like very easily like two v one, three v one that person in a heaven. Take your heaven control. Then right after that, take uh, control of a site. Okay, yeah, we're kind of just like we're doing nothing. We're doing nothing. Maybe we're waiting for our jet to make a play, but jet's not doing anything. But Reina is like doing everything. Main is like yeah. half, has half control of A already. Yeah. And now it's too late. Now he he had all this map control and now we lost it. Let's see. Now our jet decides to push to be heaven. We hard stomp back to a jet. Time is running low. We just There's went to the place where we thought we would have more control. At this point, you should smoke something. I would smoke something like right here. While while you're running, you can like have your iPad out and probably smoke CT because your your yeah. your jet has control of CT stairs already. But I'm expecting yeah. well maybe not because now yeah actually I'm expecting someone to be CT. But this is like a little bit late because your cipher is already peeking into CT. So on the side, yeah, yeah, he could have been in one one already. You plant safe. It's fine. So you don't really have control right now. Good pick. 
Yeah, we we'll lose here. Yeah. Now you have to trade off your side here, but you're a little bit late. Let's go this uh, step by step. So here with I would smoke CT spawn. One more city, one more city. Two city. And then you set for peaks, he could have died, but we're lucky, he doesn't die. And then let's see, did you just you set for ulted, right? Yeah, I did, okay. It also tells you exactly where one is. We know it's two CT, there's one A. Wait, wait, wait. should really just stay rapid, stay heaven, keep control of heaven for us. She dies, you know that chamber is heaven, so one CT, all the guys A. We plan safe. Cypher can just cover us, we can swing with our Cypher whenever he peeks. We're gonna get pick, so now it's 2v1. Last guy was seen CT, so either he's coming for CT spawn or he's going heaven. Yeah. You show up on the minimap. Guess what? He bit said late. heaven? I got confused there actually. I was willing to trade him, but then I heard heaven. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. God damn it. Try. Stop. I got I got freaked out for another reason because I had buzz very low HP. I I got freaked out yeah. there also. That's okay. This is not one of my good games at that time. I got your back. Man, but you Um, we save. You got a frenzy. Okay. This is why I don't have defense because you're kind of useless at long range. We gotta push up. Uranus is about to take an engagement. We're just looking at nothing right now. And she takes an engagement. We're nowhere near the helper. At this point, you have to make a decision. Either like here, we're just like. Wow, how long did you hold this angle? Yeah, after this, Rainer dies. We we'll look at a smoke, we we'll look at elbow. It's 118. Then we look at sight. Continue looking at sight. Continue looking, continue looking. It's been like 10 seconds now. Now you need to like make a decision. If you think like, if you're really sure that the enemy is going to push you, then okay, continue holding the angle. Although at this point, it seems really unlikely that for 10 15 seconds they haven't picked you yet. They're probably not going to pick you. Then the next thing to think about is like, what play do we make, and, and how do, like what do we do, right? Where do, where do we go? Do we do we rotate it out? Do we push somewhere? Do we hard commit to onto site and just W into onto site? Do we just W into heaven? Or like think about like what the options are, right? Yeah, true. I yeah, I was just too passive then. Yeah, right now you're like really passive. So either you have to make a play, or you have to like coordinate with your team to make a play. So for example, if I'm um, waiting for my teammate to make a play, I'll just like say I'm like the same spots. Okay, I'm holding an angle and just like Whatever. every so often, I'm take a quick glance at what my team is doing. If they're rotating out, I will rotate out as well. If they're pushing up ramp, I'll push up ramp as well. Or I'll I'll smoke certain areas so that it makes it easier for them to push up ramp. Maybe like, they don't have to worry about. Ropes, maybe I'll smoke that out, maybe I'll have to worry about CT, maybe I'll smoke that out, etc. But general idea is just, just like timing. If your team is, is like doing something, that's the time to do something with them. So that's kind of like what I'm paying attention to here. We're like, okay, you're kind of holding an angle kind of passively, kind of like just like waiting, but our jet, our jet's gonna make a play. So we need to make a play. And we don't do anything. Jet dies without our help. And now Cypher dies without our help. We're just too passive, we're too passive. Hard damage. Basically all these 1v1s happen and then nobody comes to help turn it to a 2v1. Yeah. Inka Cypher is right there. BP. And the chamber is right there. And the chamber is right there. 
ये दो ट्रैप है चेम्बर की तो जेट पॉप जेट डैश मारो दूसरी ना साइड और साइड पे कोई नहीं रहता साइड पे कोई नहीं रहता Oh, yes. yeah, actually, you have all this one. One thing I like to do if oh. if you know for sure that somebody is playing in ropes, then Brimo basically covers almost the entirety of ropes, and you guys can just like force mid control off of that. Yeah. So you can like if you have a read that you know that someone is ropes, then or someone plays ropes or is going to play ropes this round, you would just tell your team, hey, let's like stack mid, maybe send one or two people garage. And then what we'll do is that we'll just alt ropes, so you don't even have to spend a spend a smoke. You just alt it, and you know for sure that nobody can be ropes. You alt it. Maybe you get a kill. Maybe you don't. But the rest, the, the three of you guys in mid, we just like rush up mid and take B heaven. Meanwhile, two people will, will look B garage, and then it becomes like a very like strong hit on B, where like whoever is on B like gets surrounded or collapses on very very fast. Okay, so that's just like an example play that you can make with your ult. Need to be closer to our jet. Need to be closer to our jet. Too far, she's already on sight. You, you gotta, you have to push. You have to push through this thing. You can't let this this cage scare you. Two of your teammates have already gone onto sight. One of them has died. Now this Vayner is like has been alone for five seconds. Like she could have died. And we're just too, we're just too scared to push. I was Sage is pushing ahead of us and she has bomb. That truly really should not happen. Minus one pretty chamber, heaven. And yeah, I again, was playing too much like a coward basically. Yeah, well we need to, we need to figure out why you're playing like a coward so that we can fix that issue, right? Yeah. We need to figure out like what is causing what what is preventing you from pushing with your team. Is it is it awareness? Is it because you're not aware that this like you're, you're really far away? Everybody is really far away from this jet, such that even if she didn't dash, like she could find herself in a one v one, and and then no one would be able to trade routes. Like no one's gonna be able to pick the enemy for another three plus seconds. Like is it like an awareness issue, or we just not paying attention, or are we take too maybe maybe it could be like we're taking too long to smoke maybe. That we're not yeah. fast enough with our iPad. That to like we put these smokes down, but all the fights happening. That could be number two, maybe, or maybe number three. It could be like we're we're too afraid of pushing through smoke, pushing through cages. We're not paying attention to what's on the what's happening on the other side of the smoke. What's on the other side of this cage? The other side of this cage is my teammate. So theoretically, this should be pretty safe. Unless, unless my teammate dies first, because my teammate is gonna make, is more likely going to make first contact than me, pushing through the smoke. They're gonna worry about the person who's already through the smoke, not people starting to push through the smoke. Yeah. And like here, like here, we're just we're still waiting, we're still waiting. Like Sage could be in a one v one right now. She's already peeking CT spawn. We're still waiting, still waiting. Like even here for like this brief. We throw the stem, and then we just we look at this corner for like a second, two seconds before we turn to heaven. But there's no point of looking at this corner in the first place, because based on what your sage is, your sage is going to make first contact. If somebody was at that corner, sage would have to die first before, like they can shoot at you. Yeah, true. So even right here, there's no point in keeping your crosshair on this corner. Keep your crosshair like pointing at heaven. Right, heaven. Yeah, so you can like prepare for that that gunfight. Yeah. Side. Fight or not? Inke One kill left. already. Yeah. You see our teams walking through ramen. Most likely they're about to pick heaven, but yeah, no, we need to throw a smoke ACP. Otherwise, they, yeah. they, they're dry peeking. Sage, oh, not Sage, the jet is, is peeking first into heaven. Double peeks two people, she sees the race, sees the jet. Luckily, she doesn't die immediately. Yeah. She has to burn dash. Two people made.
Again, this is only going to smoke hell. A little bit too early. Now it's really early, so like... The heaven smoke makes sense if you... Assuming this smokes heaven, it doesn't actually smokes hell because you're not really aiming it right. But assuming it smokes heaven... Then... It's like... Almost okay timing. I mean, your Reyna is still in a flash for some reason, but... She should be like pushing with that. But the CT smoke is way yeah. too early because your CT, CT spawn is not important right now. What's important mm -hmm. is is getting past this this cross so that like the first smoke helps you get across that, that cross, right? Because it prevents the any enemies from heaven from, from shooting you, right? But yeah. you're not worried about CT until you cross. That's the time that you want to smoke CT. So try to like maximize the time of maximize the value of your smokes. So let's see. We put the smoke down at 116. Let's see at what point do we actually like to expose ourselves to CT. At this point, it's been 8 seconds, that means your smoke is half gone. Yeah. Now we wall, and now I think the smoke is about to dissipate. I think the reason we didn't push was because we weren't sure if there was someone backside or not. Hmm. Coming. I think even if there were someone backsides, you guys have three people here. Like you, the sage, yeah. and the reina. Like the one person backside is not gonna kill three people. Especially yeah. if you just throw a slim, you stim three people. There's a three v one. But really, I think that's just kind of like on your reina. Reina should just burn this first flash, which kind of flashes nothing. Also, generally, shouldn't, well, I guess the second flash is kind of okay. I think flashing past the, the column is more point, but at least he should take space with that. He's like, he's 240, now he's wasting both his flashes. Okay, I would just wait. I would just wait. You have bomb. You don't want to die with bomb. It's really bad. You're also alone because your team is, is like 2-3 seconds behind you. So he's just rezzing. All you can do is wait. Coming. You can trade that. Okay. Minus one, 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 one. Yeah, you notice like when you keep this, now your CT smoke is gone, long gone. Minus one, 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 Hmm. to kill them, right? Besides the fact that your Reyna didn't really entry properly. You want to play? <coughs> Let's play. I'm not really sure what the play is here. Also, I think your team is trying to hide, like, wait outside a lobby, but now you're just stomping around. <laughs> yeah. That was a fail of a jump peek. <laughs> you jump peek like five times, like, I don't know what you're trying yeah. to accomplish. I, I heard Jet Alping, so I wasn't sure where she was. Well, the thing is, it shouldn't matter, right? Because, like, the whole point of your team, your team is, like, walking here and waiting, up, because they're, they're probably here. expecting a push. Or they mm -hmm. want to... Wait until your other two duelists indirectly make, sp make space. Like your jet is peeking mid, your rain is pushing to garage or slow, slow pushing to garage. It's going to make contact with someone at B, right? They're indirectly making space by making contact and lurking and baiting attention so that they, mm -hmm. they see the jet mid and think, oh, this, the, the enemy team is like, your team is mid. Well, they see the enemy rain is B, like they, they think, oh, your team is B. There's gonna be a B hit, or there's gonna be a mid hit. They're not expecting anybody to be A so far. Until you decide to do this where like you just stomp. Yeah. And then you stomp again. Makes too much noise. He makes all this noise, right? Yeah. So I think the it seems like the original plan was just for you guys to just wait outside A and wait for the enemy to rotate over rotate. Let's go A. But now, if I was A player and I heard that, then I'm definitely gonna stay A. Yeah. 
Cypher ka camp mein. I'm going to smoke this yet. Your team is too far behind. Even if your Sage and Saifu were here, I would still wait for Reyna and Jet to be at least close to mid so they can like be in position to cut off rotations. Let's go. What happened? Somebody got upped. Let's go. No, the stage died, unlucky, now you guys are down too. That's a pointless cage. That's a pointless jump peak. This baiting chamber so hard. The thing is he the chamber knows that you're in the corner now. Because of the yeah. first jump peak. This first jump peak yeah. is like really risky because like if I was the chamber, if I was the operator, I would be looking at the gap. There's no point in looking at the smoke. I would just like yeah. look at the gap that they could like run by, right? By like mm. jump peeking this, like you could get shot. Yeah. And after you do it two times, you've already beat a shot. Chamber already knows that you're there. Mm. And I was, if I was Chamber, I would, I would just be like hyper focused on you, I'm not even worry about the cipher, because I can isolate easily isolate one one of you. Mm. But you do need to like make a play like after the shots get whiffed. Yeah, I should have peeked it. As soon as you see the shot whiff or hear the shot whiff, then that's your time to like run out or like run away or sort of do something. Hmm. Instead, you just like you just stay in the corner and then like he gets like two shots on you. So, minor issue so far. Be quiet when your team is being quiet. The chamber here. Issues so far are being too passive and uh, not being consistent and just making a lot of noise. Red side. Red side. Red side. Let's go back to this actually. Seems like your team has the same idea. We just gonna, uh, we're just gonna wait. That's why they're not making contact with the bots. So in situations like these, it's really important that the whole team does not make noise. The whole team needs to be like on the same page where like either everybody's making noise or nobody makes noise. Yeah. I'll get here. I'll trade you this oh. Somebody just jumped. I think that was Arena. Okay, now the exit is happening. A little bit slow. I would have gone to the iPad as soon as you threw this, gone to the iPad, and then walk toward the, the corner. Because again, you can, you can bring out your iPad and move at the same time. You can put smokes down and move at the same time. <laughs> we have like three guns pointed at ramps. You don't really have to be worried about anything right now. The only thing you need to worry about is putting smokes as, as soon as the Reyna entries, which when she throws your flash, <laughs> she's going to entry. Yeah. A little bit slow, but okay. We just want to join our team now. We want to join our team. We're, we're standing in the middle of opening. So standing in the middle of mid, in the middle of nowhere, I guess. Cyber side. Cyber side. Yeah. <laughs> now you blew two smokes on heaven. What was wrong with the first smoke? He was able to peek out of there. Oh, is it a gap? You didn't notice? Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. Cyber side. Cyber side. Okay, so we put the smoke and we want to join our team. So, let's, let's think. Uh, you're here, you put the smoke. Now, what are you, what are you thinking? Uh, I was thinking I was going to regroup with the Sage and try to camp backside to prevent the Jet or the Reyna to just push us. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, I I didn't even think of considering using my ult or anything to like, you know, stop them. Okay. Personally, I would save ults here because it's a 4v2, so if your team plays it correctly, you won't need ults. 
And even yeah. then, generally, alt is best used for areas that you know the enemy is getting me in. For example, <laughs> when they when they tap the bomb, you know exactly where they are. They are on top of the bomb. You can burn your alts and install for like five to ten seconds, which is really strong. Yeah. Yeah. But in this situation, I would not go backside. Back playing backside is generally a last resort because like backside is like is very limiting in your options. There's no way for you so to escape sites. Besides, like going to elbow, rotating to elbow. You also don't want to play long. My range. present place was good enough. Like I shouldn't have moved only. Um, your current place is okay. The problem is that yeah. there's no angle that you're watching that's useful right now. The only, only sure. angle that you can cover is heaven, but you can cover heaven from like many other angles and still be useful mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. So going back, uh, definitely don't play backside unless maybe if you had a vandal, maybe. But even then, like there's generally better positions for you to play. Like for example, like where Cipher is, that's a really strong position because he can be useful by um, cutting off rotations when people like drop down from heaven. They would drop down directly into his crosshair, where like they drop down, now they're exposed to screens, they're exposed to separate ramps, they're exposed to like hell, they're exposed to many, many, many places, which makes like Cypher's position like really strong to, to, to punish anyone who drops from heaven, for example. He can also yeah. peek from, from ramps into a heaven to like bait attention or get a pick while like the jet, let's say the smoke, let's say the smokes at a heaven dissipate and then jet is like busy trying to look from a heaven into sight to op somebody or, or whatever and Cypher can like yeah. take a quick peek and then get an easy kill because they they're not focused on on him yeah yeah and likewise for like let's say like a Raina's positioning where Raina kind of kind of accomplishes a similar kind of deal where like she can also like punish people for for dropping down from a heaven but then she can also <laughs> like um look let's say she looks or slow pushes through screens or contest people at screens and somewhat does the same thing by peeking into a heaven or peeking to CT spawn where now people who are rotating have to clear many many angles right yeah but in, in another example like you're you're playing below like in, at hell this is only good if someone is like gonna drop down from a heaven it really doesn't really accomplish anything else and you don't also you also don't have any other way to to rotate out because if you want to rotate yeah. to somewhere then you have to expose yourself to be out in the open. Whereas Cypher can like he can fall back very easily. Reina she can fall back very easily. Yeah. And Sage well, yeah. Sage Sage can maybe play elbow, but that's really it. It's also why you're like playing like side it's not that great. Okay, so. In your, your situation, I would probably get out of hell and then just go with Arena. Because yeah. in screens, you're more likely to find a close range engagement, which is exactly what you want when you have a Spectre. Compared to yeah. when you're in Cypher's position, I feel like if you go with your Cypher, he's more likely to play a longer range engagement because he's all the way back toward, his back is like toward ramps. He could pick all the way through heaven, or you can pick all the way through screens, which are both long range. Hmm. Okay, so let's see what happens. Here we're just looking at the smoke, just kind of pointless. Okay, now we know that the enemy ran is screens, and the jet is heaven with an op. And the person that ran is in screens has a phantom. Okay. Now, what are you thinking here? I was thinking I should take a close range fight, so I should go back side perhaps. I come okay. closer to the smoke. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, ideally, you would already be in screens to help you rain up, but okay, we may be able to blitz, or ideally, we'll, yeah. we'll play in the. Uh... I didn't feel safe going into screens because, you know, I thought 2v1, 2v1 was already there, so 2v2, I might lose because I wasn't yeah. confident with my aim at that time. Okay, let's uh, let's look at a map. Yeah. Okay, so we have our sage here. We have the Reina here, and we have Jet in heaven. We have Cipher at A main, and right now we're in the middle of nowhere. We're in just in the middle of sight, with no cover. 
Where do we want to go? Yeah. We want to go back sites. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to go back site or near screens or perhaps heaven. Okay. And then this is currently smoothed out. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, I think this makes, this is the best option. Ideally is that you would before not play in, in hell, but you would get to either screens with your, with your other arena or get to like, imagine if you got to this corner, then this would be perfect because now mm. your Sage can, can play from elbow and you'll play from, from here. When this arena pushes off, yeah. she has to deal with this crossfire. Yeah. So, yeah. But since this is not an option right now, your best option is to go back sites with play off your, your Sage with inside elbow. Yeah. And uh, in doing so, you can isolate 1v1s because we know that Jet is still heaven. Then, uh, let's see. Let me I think Jet this. was still heaven. Then I figured that she would drop down with Reyna. So I went with Sage to assist her. I still wasn't sure about heaven though. So I was speaking heaven like afterwards, I believe. If you were here with your Sage, you can like isolate this 1v1 like this. And if Jet, yeah. let's, say the, let's say the smoke dissipated, and then Jet got to here, she would not be able to see you inside elbow. Yeah. So this way you can isolate what we want. Hmm. Okay, so. Yeah. Let's see what we do. I go back to site. Yeah. A little bit slow. You see she could have died already. We're, we're walking back site. Right here, right here, right here. I wouldn't really hold this. I, I would uh, use this sign to block off my view of, of elbow and just worry about yeah. heaven for the time being or worry about the other side. <clears throat> okay, so now we spot the jets. So we now we know that heaven is not a concern anymore. It's just elbow. <clears throat> and then maybe like the left side yeah. of elbow. Yeah. But like here, you're still, you're still on this angle. I mean, okay, it's iced out, so it's okay for the time being. As soon as the ice is gone, I need to get I need to get out of this angle. Okay, let's talk hmm. about this because this is really important. You're, you're giving them a one v one here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so Sage is back sights. We have a Reyna who's in elbow. We have a Jet who's in screens. And we're playing in sign. And then let's say the cipher is uh, maybe he's holding like this or something. I don't know. Okay. So the issue here is that when Reyna pushes out, we are taking a 1v1. And this sage cannot help us. Right? Yeah. What's going to happen is that Reyna's not going to, she's going to go into this corner here. And then we're, now we're finding a 1v1 isolated. Mm. You know, sage can't help us. Instead, we want, yeah. want it to happen. Want the, order of contact to happen all the way around like we <laughs> see our sage is holding like this right so we want <laughs> the arena to push out and get to here before we can we actually make contact so in order to do yeah. that we have to hide behind the sign until <laughs> sage makes contact then we can peek out from here or then we can peek out from here and force so i should have played up my sage basically like the moment she made contact with Sage, i should have gone and you know treated yeah. her there yeah, you need to avoid taking 1v1s and try to force 2v1s. Make it as unfair as possible. Yeah, exactly. The only thing you have to worry about is if they were to go the other way. But this is what your Cypher is for. So your Cypher is already holding this. Let's say he's like either holding from here or like holding this, like this kind of this area here is within his point of view. Yeah. So if they were to go there, now you can play off your Cypher. So it kind of goes both ways. So the basic rafters and main was not a concern. The only I had to concern about was elbow. Uh, yes, because you saw okay. the jet. You saw the jet in screens. Yeah. And in knowing that, even what I would do is that I would actually, if I could, if I had time, I would get out of, of, of the sign and like play here. So that gives me what one it, I become closer. So because I'm, I have a spectre, I want to get as close as possible, right? I want to okay. avoid long range. I don't want to play far back. I want to play as close as possible. Yeah. That's objective number one. 
Objective number two is that it's possible that our cipher might overpeak. Like it, let's say that the, the render comes here and then cipher peaks here, takes a 1v1, but we're too far away. If we're on, at, at the sign, we're too far away to get to here to peak the render. Mm. Yeah. But if we got a little bit closer, if we were here, then this is a little bit shorter distance. And then yeah. maybe we can like turn that into force that to become a 2v1. Hmm. So I could have played a 2v1 from both sides without worrying for the jet. Right. Yeah. Like this jet kind of made a mistake. She shouldn't have gone screen. She should have stayed heaven. Yeah, she should have stayed heaven. Because I was issues, thinking she yeah. would be there, but yeah. Okay. So let's go back and let's see how we play it. Because it seems like we're going to take a 1v1 right now, which is really bad. Unfortunately, like, or, or fortunately rather, you survive. At this point, like you got shot a bunch of times, I would kind of expect you to die. Unfortunately, your sage peaks out too far. Let's see, yeah, she should just hug, hug that corner here. I was breaking the blind for her so that the Reina would. Yeah. I would bait myself for the Reina to push out. That makes sense. Now we just wait. We just wait. Nice good ult. Hello. No need to jump. No need I don't to know jump. I was jumping there. Yeah. Your team's already like taking engagement. You jumping, kicking, jump peeking, you're just jumping into bullets. Yeah. Peeking too early with your team. Okay, you just jump pick everything. I don't know. I learned jump peeking that so I was just like, ooh, I want to try it out. <laughs> Generally, jump peeking is for baiting off shots. If you're yeah. doing something else, well, I mean, I guess technically you could use it for information, but you know, most of the time it's, it's really just for op shots, bidding an op. Yeah. My basic was monkey reasoning, like, you know, ooh, I learned jumping, yeah. let me just jump peek every angle. Because uh, the other issue of, like, jump peeking is that you're making noise, right? You're stomping okay. every single time. Yeah. You look at your team, your whole team is being quiet. It's just you, you keep stomping, you keep stomping, you keep telling the enemy that, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm in garage. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, slowly, slowly, slowly. Nice big cipher. Two people dead. Okay, we now we know there's two people mid, right? Two people. Yeah. Dead. Jet and raise, okay. Walk, 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 please. So suppose to try that down there. At this point, there's kind of no point in walking. Because like you, you guys are so far away from anywhere that the enemy could be. The enemy could be either top mid, which you guys like if. If you imagine like the, the 30 meter radius cone of noise, the <laughs> only noise you would make would be to people in bottom mid, which we know the enemy is not, to people in sewers, <laughs> which maybe somebody could be, sewer, could be sewers, but it's just unlikely at this point. Or <laughs> like, not, not even lobby, because you guys are too far from your lobby. <laughs> if you guys are stopping, like, look at, look at your, the menu up here. You can see like the radius of noise that you guys would make. And this, you're not making noise that anywhere the enemy could be. I, I, I would worry when you get closer where the enemy could be ramps. Actually, it's very likely that someone is like ramps or possibly even close ramps. Then you start walking <laughs> because because you want to deny noise from that, that position. Yeah. Like here you're stopping, but if somebody was like close ramps, they would be able to hear that. Okay, <laughs> Got the smokes. Smokes, smokes, smokes. Smokes are really late. Really late. I should just already kept it, kept the iPad ready instead of trying to fight yeah. the chamber. As soon, yeah, as soon as you do the stim beacon down, that's the extent that you can do. Now your job is to get get the smokes ready. Yeah. And like your sage dies or not because your your smokes are too slow. Okay. And she died from up here in heaven. Where does the smokes be going down? At this point, you guys need to. You guys have side control already. 
Even though Sage dies, everything smoked off. Your team's in position. Jet has cleared the whole site. She ran through the whole site. There's no point in looking at smoke. Somebody needs to grab the bomb, which is probably you because you're the closest. Plant, plant, plant. Grab the yeah. bomb, plant. Planting backside. Okay, prepare another smoke. I don't know about this one. We probably want to get out of backside. Probably, yeah, we probably want to get out of backside. Because the issue with this machine is that you're, you're, the only thing you can do is take what we want. We can't really help our team. I shouldn't have sprayed at the days as well. Hey, just ignore the jump pick. I feel I feel horrible just to get that. Our team is trying to push up mid, but we don't have any smokes to help them. At this point, there's no point in smoking mid. Like, you're, unless your cypher is like thinking he's gonna like push to mid after two of his teammates just got opts. Yeah. But he just gives up it completely, which is what I would do. So now your smoke is kind of goes to waste. Here, I would consider just running all the way back to T spawn. This looks not that great. Gonna res. Okay. Oh, who was she? Was she in the box? Oh, yeah, she peeked from the top of the stairs. So good to know the wall doesn't actually cover that much. <laughs> Your team can't commit yet. Unfortunately, you have to though, because your is just low W. So iPad ready. Steam I ready. tried to tell her to wait, but yeah. If they're not gonna wait, you just you have to commit with them. You have to burn you till you get your smokes, get your sneak out. Yeah. Your jets already on site. Fighting 1v2. Just just W to the smoke. The smoke doesn't matter. Nice one tab. I don't know how I hit that. Nice one. I don't know how I hit that. Must have been luck. It's okay. Yeah. I'm really impressed yeah. by your duels so far because your duels are actually entering. Yeah, usually they just insta lock and but they played really well. But the problem is that the entry and the nobody's on the team is there to help them. Yeah. Okay. okay. After the first jump pick, you need to like do something with this. Do something with, with the information that you got that nobody oh, no was mid. It was mid, I think. Yeah. Because you jumped it multiple times. Hmm. Really, you just need you just need one. But I think I did see her on the minimap, like a little question mark. After after two is like really questionable. Two is just like if they haven't shot you on the second one, then it's like what what are you doing? Yeah. And now now that that peak right there, you, you saw all of saw all of ropes. This is the second one. This is the okay, the third one. This is the fourth one that sees all of ropes. Well not very all yeah. of them, like the important part of ropes. And then okay, now we peek again. Over and over. Yeah. Okay, let me die here. Okay, what's next? Ah oh, man, a good plan for it. Okay, what I like to do if you're gonna go with shorty, bad timing. This is stuck with the, the shorty by the shorty is fine, but what you should do is that you should throw the shorty on the ground, pick up the classic, then when the round starts, you trade guns so that you have the classic that you can fall back to. Otherwise, okay, okay. when the round starts, you have a shorty. Your classic would disappear. Hmm. I should pick the shoddy after the round starts, basically. Right. Got it. Just a minor detail. 
It was a bad smoke, bad timing. Kill. On site, check minus uh, 84. Okay, where is your jet? Because we're relying on our jet here. We're like, we're committing to this. We hear a ton of people doubling into us. Which means, like, okay, we can get one kill, maybe two, but we need, we need help from our team. On site, check minus uh, 84. Yeah, our jet was just too scared. Heaven. Phase on site. No, 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 no,
or yeah. if they keep pushing executing really fast and without much util so that mm. they give you like 1v1s or 1v2s or whatever instead of 1v5s because mm. the, the one issue with, with doing a play like this where like you, you pop a smoke like this is that they don't necessarily have to push you a smoke right they can just ignore that then we just go up a ramp mm. and now we have yeah. two three four people up a ramp and now your jet is like gonna get overrun I, I forgot about the shorty classic trick during this match. The shorty classic? Yeah, but you can have the classic and the shorty at the same time. Oh, okay. I mean, it hasn't played uh, a major, major issue yet. It's just kind of a nice to know. Yeah. But one thing you want to do whenever possible is like crossfire aiming. Like this is the crossfire spot where <laughs> let's say if Extreme example, if you were in screens, and then this is like your angle, right? This is your line of sight. And then if your jet is hiding on this corner here, and then this is her angle. And then you see like where this is X, this spot is, is the crossfire spot. So that when the enemy is like, they're pushing through a, a lobby, they get to here, they look at you because you're shooting at them. And as soon as you make contact, your jet peeks out also shoots at them. Hmm. So whenever possible you want to abuse this, this is a really strong crossfire. Otherwise, if you lose control of, like, if they can just, like, run across really, really freely, which is what your smoke kind of gives them, you give up map control just for you to be safe and just for you to play with a judge, which is fine if, if you expect them to ignore ramp and just, like, push to your smoke. But smarter yeah. teams will see the smoke and think, I'm going to get value elsewhere, I can get value by going up ramp, Take heaven control first, mm. then I can go. I can drop from a heaven. Then I can like push through the CT or push through to screens or whatever. Or I can rotate out. But like, they have a lot more options once they take control over a heaven. Mm. Or one thing you could do is that you can like sort of call their bluff. Or you're not in this position, but maybe you're with your jets on ramps. And you pop a smoke here to to discourage them from pushing through the smoke because maybe there was one round where you did play close range of a judge and then you put a yeah. smoke here and you waited around this corner or something then maybe yeah. you do the same thing the next rounds but instead now you're with your jet yeah. so you could play a little bit of mind games here yeah they think i'm in the smoke but then i just run away play with someone else Okay, what else? Um, also, keep in mind that these are like here is a one and done position. Here, one and done position. Here, one and done position. It's fine if you're if you're like on an eco run or something, and like you're not necessarily, um, I guess like you're you're just like trying to get like a cheesy kill or to like steal a gun or something like that, or yeah. you're you only have a shotgun, so this is like the best you can do. But generally, you want to ha have escape plans as much as possible. Even then, like I wouldn't really even play like bottom. I would probably play top, because then like the top of rafters, because you can still kind of accomplish the same thing. You, I guess, you're a little bit further, but you have an escape route. You can get to heaven very easily. Whereas here, like you have to like run all the way here or run across, where you're, like, you're really exposed. And then even if you get across, now okay, now you're in sight, but where do you go now? You have to like go across. To get the elbow away, it becomes difficult to to rotate to safety. Okay. Okay. So let's see how how we play this out. There will be pushes today, I think. Get. B, B. Yeah, at this point, this is where the, the classic would be useful. Because now yeah. we know they're not they're not coming in. Now it's gonna be really hard to retake for just a shorty. Hmm. I realized that when there is there was no classic down there. 
It was like crap. Yeah, we need to do something now. We need to do something. Yeah. Do B. We get the I orb. I just hang back yeah. in A and I think I let my teammates die. Yeah, this is the issue. So like, you get the orb. You got the orb because you felt like it was safe to do so, right? Not just because that you have a, you, yeah. you're inside of a smoke with a shorty, but because there's things happening across the map, which is probably what made you feel safe, right? Because your team in contact with the rain and garage, there's a bunch of gunfire like across the map. You're you're thinking that A is probably clear because like there's a bunch of noise elsewhere. Sure. Then we come up here. Okay, well, let me ask. What are you thinking here? I was thinking like uh, maybe they might be rotating. Who knows? Because they haven't like full W into the site. So I thought I'm like still camp there with a shotgun. Well, you went up. What made you want to go up ramp? But first, I, my I, my thought was to you know go like go with my team, go back to my teammates and regroup with them. And I was like, wait a minute, what if they get you know one flanks or something? Yeah, so because they had a cipher, so I was like, oh, they might be flanking, so I would just camp there. Yeah. Hopefully, like if someone comes, I might be able to kill them because I didn't have any weapon at that time. Yeah. I would say that there's no point in you coming to ramps. There's no point in you even regrouping with your team. Even if you knew that they're they're not A, let's say like they're they're mid, they're all five stack B, whatever. There's still no point mm -hmm. in like you regrouping your team because you're completely useless with with a shorty. If the yeah. team was actually mid, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna push to mid. You're gonna be at, all the way at, at ropes, and then you can't do anything except like control ropes, maybe and like. Get one kill and then get traded afterward. Yeah. So probably your your best bet right now to get value is actually to push A, because at least with, with pushing A, you can like at least maybe possibly gamble like a kill if there was like someone around the corner, and you have like a shorty to like win that close range one v one. But oh. your next best bet to get value is by getting information about where the enemy is definitely not. So you can like push through a lobby, ensure that okay they're definitely not a lobby. Then you push through either t spawn or you push through sewers. You see okay they're definitely not sewers, and then from sewers you can go through mid or whatever, right? And throughout this lake you can tell your team okay a is clear, a is clear, a is completely clear, sewers is clear, t spawn is clear. And then you know that for sure they're all mid or they're all b. Then your team can like um, they can like rotate accordingly or position accordingly, etc. Mm. Or or other option, other scenarios that if the enemy team was mid or was B and then they, they decide to rotate over to A, now you can be in like a really strong position to get like a kill or two. So let's just talk about that map looking. Okay, so we're here. We get the orb. There's a bunch of gunfire happening across the map. Then we can think that well, slow push through a lobby, we don't see anyone, then we can either slow push to T-spawn, which is like much longer, or we can slow push to sewers, right? In an ideal world, we, we slow push this, and then we get to, let's say, here, or even here, right? And then uh, mm -hmm. let's say that uh, the whole enemy team is like the all outside of B, and then they get shut down at B for whatever reason, like your sage, like throws a bunch of ice, throws a wall, whatever, whatever. And the enemy team is like, oh shit, I need to get out of B, let's rotate out. They go take a peek at mid, and they're like, oh, I'm not gonna go mid, there's too many angles to worry about. So they think, oh, let's just go A, right? But but then this is like where your shorty is gonna shine, where like you're the, this super close range angle, this super close range angle, you instantly win that one. one. Yeah. Right, and you cut off their rotation and not even also that's that by you being positioned so close you know, like uh, close to mid is that you'll be able to hear everything that's happening mid mm. and you'll be able to hear everything any rotate that happens to t-spawn like you'll be able to hear all that right your radius mm. so even if you don't get the kill you can keep letting your teammates know where the enemy team is going whether they rotate through T spawn, which is really valuable to have, because generally, generally, um, you, the defenders don't really know if the enemy rotates through T spawn or not, because it's like so far away. Or you tell the team that okay, they're they're in mid, they're pushing mid, whatever, and then 
let's say they they are pushing mid, you can tell your team, hey, they're pushing ropes, or hey, they're pushing be heaven, so that your team, yeah, let's say your team is uh they're either here or maybe they're in B site, or let's say because you're the only one that was in heaven, so then um, uh, let's say someone let's say your jet was here, then she dies, and then either the team the the enemy team pushes be heaven, then you tell the team, hey. They're pushing be heaven. That tells your the team here stay stay in this position. Tells your sage stay in this, stay in this position because they're gonna push into be heaven, or or if they don't push into be heaven, they start stopping into into vents because they don't they don't expect you to be here to be listening on all this stuff. You could tell them tell your team exactly where they're going. Hey, two three people going vents. That means your sage can immediately rotate off. This person here can immediately rotate off, and now your team can rotate much okay. much faster. yeah so trying to think about like this bigger picture hmm. about information that you can make a scenario gain. in your head about this yeah yeah think about all the information that you can gain not this oh, so just, just didn't invent yeah. then say, say again actually never mind i should never mind a dumb question Okay, so let's see what we do. I change my mind and I go back. Okay, so we've seen two people. And then I realized it was way too late. Nice. Still two people. Now it's three people. Last player standing. Oh, damn it. Okay. Let's pause here. What are you thinking? I was thinking like there's no way I could win that, so I thought I would steal a gun, but both teammates died in hell. So I thought I would just camp until like you know they use the zip lines and try to go up, uh, go up heaven and try to get at least one kill before dying or you know maybe okay. even save a gun. Okay, good thinking. But they knew I was there. I didn't think so. I was just doing bait smokes for random. Doesn't seem like they know that you're here yet. If they did, they would have went to the offside already. Yeah, this is the one. I got distracted by that raise actually. I was ready to kill Jet, but then I saw the raise like, oh shit. The one risk of this is that you're exposed to CT spawn stairs. So another yeah. option could have been you could have went to garage and like sat outside of garage and wait for someone to walk by and then mm. then you won't have to worry about like getting peeped from a different angle. Yeah. Let's get I will back off. Here yeah. we'll back off because you now heard three people, a Jet Dash, a, a, a raised Roomba, and uh Wait, no. Wait, that was our Jets. Oh, wait, no. The other team has a Jet, so that is, that is three people. Rain of Flash, that's one. Roomba, and then Jet. So that's three people here. And then you also... We're about to get pushed, I would expect this to become a 1v1 because based on our jet's positioning, our jet is yeah. not even able to watch the cross right now. Like people are crossing, <laughs> she's she's smoked out completely. <laughs> so okay, let's go back to the map again. I should just fell I should just fell back and just waited for a C should regroup with me then. You have multiple options. Let's uh let's go to them. Okay, so we are we were here, top of ramp. Our jet was here. Okay, so mm. generally what you want to do is is like not stay here. That's number one. You want to stay. You want to go somewhere else. Why? Because yeah. when this is smoked for the four or five seconds that it smokes, we hear three people, and they're less likely to push the smoke. They're more likely to push the ramp, which is not smoked. So which are the three mm. people are gonna come our way. And we need to be ready for yeah. this. So, one thing we can do is that we fall back and we hold a passive angle. 
So mm. something like, um, let's say we were like uh, here. Although this is not so great because this is probably going to be the first thing that they're going to see. This is going to be like, this is like a first angle, so to speak. But let's say maybe, maybe we're like on top of this thing here. We're standing on that instead of like, instead of standing here. If you know what I mean, there's like a little, little like barrel that you can jump on top of. Oh. So it's a tiny bit of an off angle. But the goal is to, again, not be committed so that if people um, peek out of here, that we try to hold our angle as tightly as possible and then not commit, like ha have the, the escape option ready, immediately ready so that we can escape immediately. Huh. Another option is that we could play here, which I actually I like better because now we're closer to our jets. So yeah. what we can do is hold this angle really tightly, really uncommitted, maybe get a couple of shots off, maybe a burst, whatever, and then we fall back. And when we fall back, we fall back toward our jet, so that now we're playing off our jets, maybe we lose control of heaven, okay, fine, maybe we throw a smoke here, and then either we discourage them, or now that gives another option where we can pop the smoke here, like say, um, okay, order of operations is that... So we hold this angle, they start pushing, we take a couple shots off, we fall back to here, or we're here, whatever, so hug this wall, then we put a smoke here to discourage them, and then then we said, do we stay here and then hard hold this smoke, in which case we would not necessarily play heaven, maybe we rotate over to the box, or maybe we rotate over to towards CT spawn, so that we try to change our position a little bit, so they're a little bit less predictable or do we stay yeah. here use smoke just to discourage them and then play for a jet right now our jet is in this position and then we right now she's like holding this angle she might eventually go here and then hold like this angle and as soon as the enemy like pushes it to this angle we want to force this this engagement here where like um this is like jet's angle this is someone who's going to push in this spot here this like intersection point, we want to have an angle on that position, on that spot. Mm. So if yeah. we were heaven, when Jet makes first contact, we peek out, and we force this to become a 2v1. Mm. So many options that, that you can make here. Again, it all, yeah. all goes back to you want to avoid 1v1s, and you want to mm. force 2v1s. And you want to like you want to ha have escape plans. You want to know when you want to play committed versus non-committed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So an example of like you playing committed would be like Jet's here. She's holding this angle. Then because you're because Jet has already made first contact, the person who makes second contact can swing as far as you want. So you don't necessarily have to like yeah peek off of this like hold close to this wall anymore. Now you can just like full sprint to the edge of this of this. Just so that you can get maximum angle on this 2v1. Because but, in this scenario, it's no longer important that, that you're safe. You're already going to be safe because they're fighting your jets. They're shooting at your jet. They're not looking at you. So uh, what's more important is that you you join the fight as fast as possible. Alright. Make sense? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Walk back, regroup with the stage and the jet, and try to wide swing and, you know, make a 2v1. Just make it unfair. Yeah. And so just staying stuck at the ramp, where I'm just overexposed to everything. You're not necessarily exposed to ramp. Like, the problem is that you're going to fight three people here, and then you're here, or maybe you're here, but you're still fighting above me three. Yeah. Yeah, and what? Minus 52, minus 66. My mistake was I didn't expect them to push through the molly, actually. The problem is your molly, because it's going down the ramp, it's actually going farther than what you expected. Yeah. Yeah, and what? So. Let's go back. Let's look at the map. 
and then the compare where you just aimed. So where that molly just bounced. Most likely it's gonna end up here. This is most likely where the molly is going, and then you the enemy team can just go around it. Sure. What am I missing completely missing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Minus and then, second thing is that even if you were to commit to this angle, yeah, yeah. you're still in the open. Like, you have a box to your right, you have like cover to your right, you have cover behind yeah, yeah. you, you should just like hug those things. Yeah. Right? So, like, back to like, back to the Playing the geometry, or playing to the the map. Even if your goal was to hold the map, you can do so here. You can do so here, right? And then you have a wall. You have a box, right? Instead of you being here, now you have no cover. You're hard committed to anything that happens. Oh. -52 you got the same smoke, so I don't like it. You've done the same smoke every single round, and the enemy yeah. has shown to you last round that even if there's it's smoke, they're just gonna push through the smoke. So unless yeah. you you're planning to hold close of a judge or something, like this smoke is not gonna accomplish anything. Yeah. And even then, like the Reina has shown that she burns flash every time, no matter what. So hmm. even if it smokes, because right now the smoke it smoke is down, but even if you were there, you have to deal with the flash. Yeah. I don't like this this molly. Because now you've discouraged them from coming in front of you. You actually want to yeah. bait them to come to you because you, you're you going to win this any 1v1 duel that happens here because you have a judge in close range. Yeah. yeah. By smoking and mollying, you've encouraged them to go heaven. In which case now you can't do anything to help your jet. Your jet. <laughs> so okay, now your sage has fast, super fast work today, so now your jet can play off the sage and vice versa. Great. And now they've set the cage, so they're really shown to you that they don't really care about pushing out to site right now. They just really want to go heaven. That's why they heaven caged. Yeah. Fortunately, your jet peaks too soon. I like the smoke. It's a little bit too late though. Yeah, you can put a chip here. They really don't care about going to site. They just go care about stacking heaven. Yeah. But yeah, all this has happened and we haven't accomplished anything. We haven't gotten any value so far. And yeah. now this is kind of a gamble. We don't know if they're actually gonna going to go continue going A. They could very well go anywhere else. And we also <laughs> don't know if they're gonna drop down in front of you. They could go ramp, they could go screens, in which case like your judge is like just gonna hard lose. Your judge is only useful here if they drop directly out of heaven. <laughs> which is unlikely because you've already shown yourself you've uh, you shot the trip. You shot the trip, they know somebody's here. They know yeah. that that person is either hell or that person is is a ramp or walking about to walk up ramp. Yeah. But I hear, I hear someone stopping a ramp, so that's probably that person who's peeking, getting the information <laughs> that you're not ramp. Now he's regrouping with his team. Now they know that you're either hell or you're in sight. But, but around here they start peeking sight, I think. So he goes with his team. Okay, looks like they, they ignore his sight completely. Rotating. <laughs> yeah. Here I would just run. So a couple things here. Let's do a little exercise. How many people do you hear in heaven? I heard three people. 
one ramp, one knife, and one was just running up heaven. And I wasn't sure okay. if Cypher was there or not. Okay. I was thinking like they would drop down into A, but then they just gave up and went back. Okay, then next exercise. Where did those three people go? How many people went ropes? How many people went CT spawn? I assumed all of them went into vents. <coughs> but when they... There's a dis distinct sound between a heaven and versus someone grabbing the ropes versus someone dropping down into into ropes. Yeah. So that's one. You hear the ding sound where like that means someone dropped into ropes, and then we got <laughs> a rope. So at least two. Rotating. Yeah. So then when you say rotating, you should be very specific. You say that. There's three a heaven, and then you say there's two going ropes to B, or ropes going mid, and you say that one yeah. possibly going CT spawn. Hmm. And I say possibly because we don't know if he's actually going CT spawn, maybe he's still still a heaven, maybe he's also ropes, but he didn't make a sound yet. Yeah. Nogi, what are you thinking in this situation? My situation was go into CT slowly and maybe try to get a pick or either go and get a gun. I am not sure what I did. Okay. But you could just get a gun by going in heaven. Yeah, that, no, that was my thing. Like either I'll go and, you know, try to take a close range fight at CT or go to heaven and get a weapon there. Okay. I would say whichever you choose, you need to be fast, as fast as possible. You already know yeah. at this point, like... You don't hear any more footsteps, that means that they're already in mid. Yeah. Escape, escaped out of your, your range of sound. At this yeah. point, they could be at B-Heaven. Okay, now we start stopping. Good. That was too slow though. Are you serious? Last player standing. I want to stick around here. They know where you are because you're, you're, you activated the trip. Yeah. I was thinking of playing for picks. Say again? I was thinking of playing for picks. Like, I knew like I couldn't win against three of them. So right. I thought I'd just, you know, go for exit frags. Okay, that makes sense. The problem is that you just go for exit frags where they most expect it. Yeah. Here, you're a heaven. You get spotted by the trip. Okay, fine. We get the gun. And then we stay a heaven. We stay a heaven. We should be getting the hell out of here. If you notice, the way that the Cypher peeks us, he's walking right now. He's walking, 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 and then he slow peeks us, right? Because he knows that we're in heaven. Yeah. This is very clear that he knows that we're in heaven. He knows because the trip was activated. Yeah. So, like, you managed to get the kill, but, like, like that really shouldn't have... He, he should have killed you if he was playing it properly, if he aimed properly. Yeah. I was just lucky there. So, like... When the enemy knows where you are, generally you want to reposition. You want to go somewhere else. Sure. You could go ropes, you can go mid, you can go, you can even go all the way through T spawn and then sure. try to go from, from T spawn to get to outside of garage or something. Or go from T spawn to, to ramen, the whole bottom mid, something like that. Sure. Just avoid this yeah. area because this is where I would expect the, the last person to be who just activated a trip five seconds ago. And then I would I would also avoid here because the the person who just killed the guy CT spawn well he's probably still CT spawn. Yeah. Right? You see you see how they're peeking right? They're peeking yeah. very slowly because they know you're CT spawn. Yeah. And this is gonna be like the fifth time you've done this smoke. Nah, bro. At least this time it makes sense because now you have a judge to play off of it. But I'm not sure how you're gonna. Okay, we have two smokes now. Okay, so the second smoke is gonna help us deal with the, the rain of flash. That's good. Yeah. Although it's a hard commit because we don't know if they're actually gonna come A yet. <laughs> okay, so, it so you have the right idea, but you have the also have the wrong idea. Well, like now you just gave up Opposite. our advantage here. Yeah. You want to push it first, push it with salt. Push it out to your left, you're hearing reload. Rotating. 
You can play inside the smoke. I just, I just held back because I wasn't sure how many of them were there. It doesn't matter, you one shot them. And then uh, Cypher was asking, don't push. I was like, alright, cool, I won't push. Let's take it step by step. Yeah. So we do the same setup, which I don't like. But at least this time we do a second smoke, which I really like. Because the second smoke is going to help us block the, the rain of flash, which means that we can more easily play close range, which is exactly what we want. But we can't do that if we give up space like this. And then we set the ult, okay fine. As soon as the ult happens, we need to play around it so that when this ult happens, we don't have to worry about people in front of us or people to our right. Either they're going to push up ramp, so okay, let's uh, go to the map again. Yeah. Okay, so there is like a smoke here, there's a smoke here, kind of. And then you have a big ult happening here. And then we're here. So when this ult happens, we don't have to worry about anything inside this ult. Right? If they're inside mm. the ult, it's going to die, right? So either they're going to push yeah. past the ults into a 2v1 with your, your jets here and your rainers here. Or they're going to go back. Or they're gonna go here, which is exactly what you want. If they're here and then this cubby, this is like three kills, basically. Basically yeah. three kills, because if you have a judge, you won't tap anything by turning this corner here. Yeah, so that basically turns into a death trap. Right. Okay, so we have all happening. This is the general game plan. We'll play around our ult by going working around around the ult and then killing <laughs> anyone who is trying to escape the ult. <laughs> okay, let's go back so you can get volume. Thing is, I wasn't sure how many kills were still to the left. I knew I had split two of them, but after that, I just wasn't sure what to do. Okay. Yeah, they have. Listen to the footsteps. I hear someone reloading, and you hear a second person stopping. So at least two, possibly three. Rotating. We're too afraid. And to then push. I just, I was, I became a coward and I didn't push it because I knew I would get instantly murdered if they were like went back to the right. And we have a lot of options here because you have all this util, right? Yeah. So one thing you could do. If you're really scared to push, throw Molly into there, right? Sure. So let's go go to uh, back to the drawing board. You're here. Shoot a Molly, bouncing off this wall, goes into here, right? What's gonna happen? People are here. One person, two people. Now they're gonna run away. As soon as they run away, you can push out of the smoke. Get a kill. Get a kill. Maybe while you're in the smoke, you drop a steam beacon behind you, and then you, you very quickly get like multiple kills. Mm. Okay, that was option number one. Option number two, you have a smoke here, you have a smoke here. Again, because you have a judge, you want to be as close to range as possible. You don't want to be far back here where you are. You want to be inside the smoke. You want to be inside the smoke. And be extremely threatening. If anyone's inside the smoke, you just kill them, right? You have a judge. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know that there's one person here, maybe two people here, and we have a third smoke. So what if instead of mollying, we smoke this off? So now this is isolated. And then again, we sure. throw them behind us, we push out, we one-tap both of these people, because we have a judge at close range. Yeah. So basically, abuse the fact that you have a judge, abuse the fact that you have potential close range from your ones, abuse sure. the fact that you have multiple utility to help you isolate angles, or improve sure. your your one v one ability, or force them. You use a money to force them to go get out of where they are, to force them to sure. rotate out. You have an alt that forces them to rotate out. Then you punish them for rotating out. They're rotating this way. They rotate into your line of sight. They rotate this way. They rotate into your line of sight, into your judge, sure. your stim judge that you just one tap everything. Yeah. So I'll stim judge and just instantly rush out because I knew they like, they don't expect any push out of there and they're like out uh, uh, off guard. Um. Well, I guess they'll probably expect something because by when they sneak see a smoke don't go down like this, where it's smoking their exit, or if they yeah. they um, see a molly bouncing off the wall into their face, then they might start huh. to expect something. But it doesn't really matter because. As soon as they, they get try to get out, try to escape the molly, or they try to go anywhere, they just get one yeah. shot with your judge. Huh. 
All right? Okay, so let's see what happens in the video. This third smoke is not very good. Because it doesn't do anything to help you. It just keeps things at neutral. Like this, you see, now you see the Cypher is alone, you should just push the Cypher. You know that the, his, the, enemy, the team is not able to help him, you can just push the Cypher. But now Cypher is running away. To safety. Now we're stimming, stimming his main, but we, sh we shouldn't even expect the 1-1 to happen. We know that nobody's here. Based on, look at the minimap, we see, because of our Cypher ulted, tells us where everyone is. We know that two people are T spawn running away. We know that Cypher is alone. You could have fought the Cypher. He cages. He's caging because he wants to get out of here. You hear him stomping. And you hear him knife. Like that. Right? He knifed. He made it very clear exactly where he is. Yeah. He made it very clear he's going T spawn. Yeah. So now this is pointless. This is like you not paying attention to what just happened. Yeah. Yeah, just break these and then rotate. Raise attack. There's no point in holding hands. If the spike's down, they're gonna go to the spike. They're not gonna come back, eh? And uh, what we should do. Yep, go ahead. Nothing, nothing. Okay. But right here, this, I would just like run into sewers. Because there's a dead body in sewers. There's also a dead body in T spawn, I think. Like here, they're buying sewers. Pick up that gun. Become useful. Here, we're not useful, we're not useful, we're useless, we're useless. Hmm. We're really useless. Now we can. Oh, I suspect you're unfortunate. We can find another gun. Okay, great. Now we're useful. Okay, great. I like it. One for knife. Make sure you kill this guy. Okay. Only died. Yeah. A B kid runs back. Should probably offer to drop your Urena. Okay, I like it. We're switching things up. Now we're playing B site. Connection is coming. Keep playing the setup, man. Right. You shouldn't have to see the spawn, it's too slow. Yeah, I should have gone from vents. Yeah. Couple things is that generally you want to be, as Brim, you want to be playing close to mid or around mid as possible so that if something yeah. happens across, this, across the map, you can smoke it or smoke something. Yeah. So, like with you going to a B garage, the further you go to B garage, the further away you can smoke A. Like, this is the extent of your smoke. You can only smoke mid now. Right. So okay, now we're returning to to heaven. Now we can maybe we can smoke a ramps from here, but the problem is that we're going to see this spawn. This is too slow because uh, you look right. at your sage. Your sage walled mid. She's walling mid to help you control mid so that you can rotate quickly and efficiently. Okay, got a crazy lineup. Stay on side. I would stim the sage. No, I, I would stim the sage. No I would stim, stim something, stim your team. Vents behind you. Heaven. Okay. But I like that you're at least switching things up. So that they can't just expect you to be at A side anymore. Huh. I don't like the smoke. Don't look at all. Mm. Why are the icing? Did we get information that I didn't hear? On mid B. No, I don't hear anything. You say each ISIS for no reason, okay. We should smoke the wall as fast as possible, yep. So that your rain and your jet can control the wall, great. Too slow though, we're looking at nothing, we're looking at nothing, now you now we lost control of heaven, we're too slow. 
We got a Hopovino, get Hopovino, get Hopovino. Okay, so now around here we the jet stash. I heard the footsteps, so yep. I wasn't I thought he was coming in uh, B. Fine, so we heard the guy in garage, but the bomb is planted A. That means the person who's A is alone, the other person is in garage and is rotating as fast as possible. So that smoke is useless. And this this rotation is too slow. Because right now we're really split from Arena. The Arena seems like she's gonna like push onto the site by herself. That's the only one that we don't want to have happen. Big kill. Okay, great. Just hold W. Yeah, W and defuse. So my issue is that put it to head is rotation to mid is much faster than rotation to CT. They just wanted an operator, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just waiting for them to take it. Okay. I'm not sure Okay, your team has lost control of A. Okay, what are you thinking here? I was thinking like if they have pushed up mid, so I first then I thought that it was you know useless, so I just started running towards A. I wasn't sure if that's CT control or not, so they might be pushing CT. Okay, let's take about timing then. Because if they were A, they would have to make first contact with your arena. Yeah. And so based off the time that our arena dies, that tells us where the enemy could be. Okay, so she dies at 110. And she died to someone at a lobby. At this point, there's no way anybody could be seen to spawn. They cannot possibly be seen to spawn. They could be in a heaven, but it's very unlikely that they be seen to spawn. Okay, so now Sage has made the first contact again with the jets. So that tells me that a heaven is like pretty much clear. There might be someone like top ramps or between a heaven and ramps, but that's it. Like this should be all clear. Okay, now we know that someone's top ramps. We could probably hop our Sage, I hope. No, maybe not. No. We're ignoring the fight, unfortunate. And now our, our time spent walking has been gone to waste because now we're Now there's no point in walking. We need, this, we need to help our jet. Okay, we're mauling this. We're mo hopefully we're mauling this so we can use the time that this is mollied to not focus on this. Okay, great. Before we peep the stem. Let's go. If you knew that they were CT, you should just stand in the middle. You know the CT, you want to not stand in in the first angle that they're gonna look at. The first thing they look at is is heaven, because they're rushing out of C of C to spawn to get to like get a view on site, and you're standing directly in in that line of sight. So you want to hug the wall to your right, so a little bit of an off angle, huh. right? So like this place in slow motion, right? Notice that when they first come out, you're literally the first thing that they see. Literally the first thing you, like, that, that they see. 
He hasn't even bothered to like check any other angles because this is the first angle to check. And my VLC just froze. I heard Cypher run, so I expected only Cypher to be there, so I didn't, I thought like, you know, Reyna would swing off me in there. Even so, you still want to abuse off angles. Can yeah. I stop it maybe? What the heck? I wasn't sure like where, like, I should keep an eye on, like, where Reyna was went, but then I saw Cypher, like, walk running, so I was like, oh cool, I just killed Cypher here. Okay. Because so I knew they were, they had to be in a hurry, because the bomb was already being defused. Yeah, this VLC is just frozen. Okay. You working here? You couldn't pay me to sit at a desk. Me out, nice. Me in, I guess I did. Heaven me out, nice one. Okay. Nice one. Nice. My backside kill them. This I feel like is not necessary. Now your team has three people A and your jet has an operator. So if anything, the position should be swapped because you have a vandal, you should be playing closer than the jet who has an operator. BBB multiple side push cover. Okay. <laughs> yep, smoke as fast as possible. Oh, we get closer. What I'm expecting to happen is that your safe is going to get collapsed on. Okay, nice. You do hear someone mid. That smoke is useless. If they're mid, they're not going to be phased by your smoke because they know that this, this angle is walled off. Yeah. Huge. Rotate to your arena. ACP. Spikes here. Rotate to your arena. ACP. There's no point in walking. A is completely clear. You need to run, you need to run. Okay, now we run. Get this free orb. Yep, get ult. I'll trade right now. At this point, I really could be dead a long time ago. What? Oh. I didn't expect her to kill me yeah. from the row, so with the accuracy yeah. factor. Yeah, that's kind of expected too. I thought you would be inaccurate. I thought I would just keep spraying and, you know, she won't be, she won't be discouraged. Yeah. But the main issue so far is just. Timing. Timing and awareness. Well, we're too afraid of non-existent threats, and then then we come too too slow to rotate, or too slow to do something. We eventually make the right decision, whip out a knife, get the orb, run, but we make it way too late. Yeah. I wouldn't smoke this and see. Go back. Your, your jet still has an. But the smoke is useless. Yeah. The smoke will actually benefit the enemy team. Yeah. yeah. You see where your jet is standing? Like, you're smoking off your jet. Because the enemy can use your smoke to bypass jet's angle. Right, so let's... Let's go to... Back to the drawing boards. And let's figure out why is the smoke bad? Exactly why. So we're on A main. We're smoking like this. And then when they okay, it's a bit too small. A little bit bigger. Smoking like this. They can go inside the smoke and then come this way, go this way, or go around. Like, like escape this way, right? But your jet is in heaven, can only cover this this way. Yeah. They can go to ramps, they can go from this side of the smoke and like B 
be isolated from all these other angles. They can be isolated from your jet, but you don't want that. You want to funnel them into your jet. You want to yeah. abuse the fact that your jet has an op and force them to go into the op as much as possible. So I should have just smoked off ramp and Molly did. I would just not smoke at all. I would just let our jet do her thing and then because she has an op, I would just go somewhere else. Yeah, Maybe I would I go can... up like heaven. Yeah, either you can go heaven, you can go up ramp, although rain is already here, so maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe you go mid, so that mm. there's less pressure, the jet can continue holding this angle for as long as possible, something like that. And then, if you wanted to smoke, I would wait until... Wait till jet's holding this angle, she takes the first shots, and then put a smoke, to allow her to easily disengage. Maybe. Let's see what our jet does. See our jet is like, well, shit, I don't have an angle anymore. Now I, I waste a shot into whatever and I waste it somewhere else. Yeah, cool. Mate, you see what, what our jet just did? I'll camping. I'll camping. Yeah, she just I'll fell back like, ah, oh, shit, what's the point? Yeah, exactly, and she smoked out. And now, like, she's completely useless. She's like peaking mid, but not mid's walled. Nice. Ideally, she should be oh, holding A, and then, and then we could be mid. And then we could play the closer range, closer range angle. Yeah. At this point, even I wasn't sure what to do. Like, were they coming A or were they committing B? If you're not sure, okay. So in a situation where you're not sure, you either, one, get information about where they are, safely if possible. Hmm. Or two, play in positions where you can quickly rotate if, like, information happens that there you find out that they're hitting B you don't want to be so far away like deep into a site that it takes you forever to rotate to B so that's goal number two goal number three is to play positions where you're not committed so that again you can rotate to other bomb site right so in this situation here this is okay, but could be improved upon because because we don't know where they are, we want to make sure we can rotate as fast as possible. But by being here, we're a little bit slower to rotate compared to if we were on A Heaven, for example. If we were on A Heaven, we're kind of watching the same kind of angle, like A Heaven Rafters, but then we can also rotate really fast and we have more options. We can go to CT Spawn a little bit faster, or we can go through Ropes, which is really fast. Or, if we choose option 1, then we try to get information. How do we do that? Either we... You can do the jump peek thing, which is a little bit risky, because it also tells the enemy like where you are, when you're stomping around. Or, if you're an information gathering agent, you have Cypher, Pasova, or a Sky, whatever. You can use utility to gain information about where the enemy is or isn't. And finally, third is that you can like push through areas, like slow push and jiggle peak, and again, peak like in non-committed ways, like jiggle peak or jump peak, instead of wide swing. Wide swing is very committed, right? So like you're peaking just to gain, gain information, not necessarily to start a, start a fight. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, no questions so far. Okay. One, two, three. So it's basically just a lot of bad decisions. That's like, I think. Like bad decisions angle, and positioning. Right. So mm -hmm. this angle is, is like none of the above. Because we're not getting inf any information that we don't already have. Because Reyna kind of already has uh, yeah. sight lines on the smoke. And, this is a useless yeah. crossfire being held. And we're far away from a rotation to B. And we're in a committed position where, like, if someone, if they, if this was to be an A hit, we don't have an escape route. We're stuck behind this this plant, and that's it. We just have to fight it out and hope that we yeah. win the two v four. So 
So I'm going to B. The problem, again, with not playing around mid is that we're too far to smoke anything. We're too smart to, flip, to smoke B. Yeah. I'm just okay. uselessly peeking here. Not necessarily useless. I mean, you're still holding a lobby in case someone's looking, but I would do so in a less committed way, in a, in a better position. I would be closer okay. to your team. You're really separated from your team. Let's see, let's go yeah. back here. To when your team starts making first contact, one, two, three. let's see what happens. Cypher makes contact, he sees one, or at least one. Okay, he says multiple B, so he's two. Now we see Vayner, we see Cypher. So the other two, the rays in the chamber, so far are still unknown. So I was waiting for them like, to come on the map, but please. To, to what? For them to like appear on the map, so that mini map, so that I go there or it. Okay, but even then, in doing so, you can you can play in positions to like that facilitate rotations, so that you're faster yeah. to rotate, or you're in a less committed position. One issue I see right now is that because you're in a committed position, if the Reyna and Chamber were to burst around this corner, you're again you're forced to fight this one v one v one or forced to fight this one v two. You're too far away from your Reyna for her to help you. You're too far away from, from getting out of the situation that you just have to like hard hold this, right? I'm just isolated. So if you wanted to play the same position, I would either play from screens, which is not so great, but at least you're you're you have an escape route. Or you play from A Heaven, which is much better, holds the same kind of angle, huh. or you play it from top of ramps. Huh. Which is a slightly different angle, but in both scenarios, you're you're much closer to your team. If you spot somebody, you can say, "Hey, Rain, I need help. There's people coming A." Or if you don't spot someone, you know they're coming B. Then you have a much faster rotation. You should you save like five to ten seconds off your rotation. Yeah, I can just easily uh, go from vents. That's why. Right. Or so that would have been yeah. a better option. Right. If they also, also if they go mid, you're much closer to Rain to help her if she needs help dealing with people at mid. Etc. Things like that. Yeah. So we just old extended. I'm leaving side. Bola ja plant kare me pal sam kumite. Yeah, I think this is like play. I don't think you should walk. This ult is kind of pointless unless your sage and your jet dies because they're they're in positions to make first contact. Your ult is not not useful. So I still wasn't sure like if Rays and Chamber were there. I think, but then I heard the sniper shot, I think. So, if you see here on the minimap, Reyna is garage, she's flashing, but your Sage and Jet are on site. Well, your Sage is on site and the Jet is heaven, peeking on the the outside of garage cross. Right? So she's Reyna, now your whole team is peeking the cross, right? Just look at the minimap, you see the vision cone. All three of them are peeking the cross. So, yeah. unless all three of your teammates die, then, like, this is going to be safe. So there's no point in walking, there's no point in ulting. The right play here is to continue running as fast as possible, help your Sage feel safe so that she can get a res off. If I was I was a Sage, I would be looking to, to res off, I would suffer. Okay, we finally got info on where... Uh, okay, last, last was. two people mid. Don't mid, don't mid. And we're too passive. We're still not holding anything useful. Okay, great. I like the results. Um, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. No, we just run. We just hide. So, I like the ults, but we could have accomplished the same thing just by playing faster. I'll yeah. your sage from the Who is she is? What? Okay, she was a cipher. Yeah, exactly. If I was a sage, I'd be looking to res a cipher. So you could have like helped facilitate that by securing the sites, securing the like covering the stage while she goes for a res, so that your team can fight the 5v4 or fight the 5v3. 
instead of waiting for yeah. the last 15 seconds of the round to do the rest. My thought set was just, my thought was just, you know, camp and A and, and the rotate, because I wasn't sure, like, they were going B or not. Mm. You just have to, like, keep keep constant tabs on the minimap and keep constant awareness mm -hmm. of, like, what areas that your team has under control. If yeah. this area is under control, there's no need to walk, there's no need to, like, prepare an alt, right? You just need to, like, continue, continue Wing. Okay. Last round. Last one. What I like to do is like to buy an op, so that I have an op plus a rifle to fall back upon. And then split is like very op favorite, especially the the enemy team does not have any smokes. Like you should be like hard abusing the op because yep. they don't have any smokes to to deal with you. The only thing they can do is like. Main of flash. <laughs> it's literally, they don't even have any other flashes. <laughs> so they don't have anything to actually push you off the angle. They can only do like yeah. mini smokes like a cypher cage or a jet smoke, which lasts around four or five seconds. And then you go back to opera. <laughs> okay. Like here, this is a, a great angle for you to like buy an op. Instead of like, I don't know, what do we buy like, like um, a Mali or something? Or you can just do like light shots. Yeah, I think we're just stuck with the Vandal. Or you can ask your, your Sage. Your Sage has money for an op. You can yeah. have the op and the Vandal so that you play in this huh. position for, I don't know, let's say the first five, 10 seconds of the round, whatever. They push into A, they run into your op. Let's say you miss or you kill, whatever. If they get control of sights, then you drop the op for the Vandal so you can play retake with the Vandal. Huh. And they'll probably be less expected of that because you've shown yourself to be opping from screens. They're probably not expecting a vandal to push from screens. We're too far away from our jet. Jet's gonna make a play. She's making a play right now. That Molly is useless. We need help by Reina. Right We're too slow. 35, 84, 70 die. Brim, Evan. Vent. 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 I wouldn't fight this. You get the kill, but you could have very easily gone the other way. So in this situation here, they have control of heaven. There's at least two people at heaven. And then they have to push out of heaven. And then right now, Every exit out of heaven is covered. You're covering CT spawn, <laughs> your jet is covering um, the A heaven dropping to sight, and your sage is covering the ropes. Yeah. So there's no point in like peeking into heaven like this and forcing a 1v1. Especially we're taking a 1v1 when our cypher is, is not ready to trade us out. Like, we turn around, we look at our cypher, the cypher is not even ready to trade us, we shouldn't have fought this at all. And like, if they, lucky there. Yeah, if they push into the jet, which is exactly what you want, then the jet can just like take free operator shots over and over and over because they don't have any smokes. Nice. <laughs> so again, you, you want to funnel them into your operator. <laughs> okay, I like this then. But he had spikes, so we just camped it. Use the enemy team. We're not having any smokes, controllers. He's on that. Try to funnel the enemy team into your team's operators. Nice, nice. Nice. nice, you guys can execute really fast. This W really fast, W really fast. Careful with the piece. Bro, really risky. Really risky. Besides the smoke again, again, that's not really smoking heaven. This, picking this is like extremely risky because like, when there's a gap in the wall, this is literally the only thing that an enemy would be looking at. They would only, the only thing they can yeah. 
Look at is the gap. When you pick from yeah. the gap, so you're the first thing they're gonna see. Bro, what? I choked oh. my spray. So be really careful about that. You're like, you're much more to be committed one shot, eh? than expected. Yeah. One heaven. Okay. It's long run. Okay. <clears throat> Mid Smoke mid, ACP, smoke mid Smoke mid You see she's help, smoke mid This is giving engagement happening right now Okay, good Now we want to pick up where our Raynor left off So let's say At the beginning Raynor was top ramps We see that she's rotating off we want I should substitute her position yeah, now, now we want to go top ramps to 1, be closer to our ropes rotate if they really really need help, help mid and 2, help cross fire with our jet because originally Reyna was cross firing with jet but now she's rotated to mid, we should take up that original position here we're, we're not looking at anything useful they can't possibly be up ramp because you, they, have, you, they have to run past your jet to line of sight first yeah now we gotta help our Reyna, Reyna too slow here you have to write it down, just keep control of ropes so that if they push into ropes then you can very easily kill them you're in very unexpected spots but you're not really hey. able to push through ropes because they can just like there's, mul there's multiple people in mid and unless you cast someone like off guard Right now your job, you have all entrances covered, right? Your jet's watching yeah. Heaven, you're watching ropes, Cypher is watching B garage. So yeah. no matter what, they have to I run into just one head my position. Right. Hold your position, wait for something to happen, and then maybe you consider so, pushing uh, up. Yeah. Hard to be my but by you dying, now they have like free reign to my go uh, A. Uh, like they've, they've escaped the contain that your team had. Hmm. Yeah, and now both of them, both of them are A. For sure. Okay. So, let's go to some notes. These are notes I took. The smoke yeah. placements are, are really bad. Like, especially on... on on B site, like each time you, you never actually smoked heaven, you just smoked hell, which just doesn't really do anything. Uh, yeah. Smoke timing is also really bad, where like you're either smoking too early or you're smoking too late. Sometimes you smoke <laughs> so early that by the time that the smoke is useful, the smoke is gone. For example, when you <laughs> guys execute onto, onto B sites, you smoked <laughs> CT spawn, then 10 seconds later, the execute happened, then 5 seconds later, you peak CT spawn, by then the smoke is gone. Yeah. Other times that there's engagements already happening. Like an example would be like when every almost every time that your team executes onto A, your smokes are too late. Either because you're you're not aware or because you're you're still getting to position or like you're too busy doing something else or whatever, whatever. Something is causing you to smoke too late, particularly when you're oh. executing on A site. So that like actually I can pick an example, like since it always happened like every single time, here's an example. Oh, check it. The team's not yet executing. Let's say, uh, okay, here's one. Okay, like, so in this scenario, I want you to look at your arena. <laughs> look at what your arena is, and don't look at uh, your crosshair. Don't look at the mini map or whatever. Just like look at look at the arena, and then look at the arena as she's pushing to the mini map. For this yeah. uh, quick exercise. <laughs> so look at the arena. She's peeking screens. <laughs> She's peeking heaven, she's exposed to heaven, she's exposed to hell. Now she's peeking sights, peeking back sights. She's already peeked like 10 different angles before we smoke, right? Do you see this? So yeah. like, this is a clear example, like, the smokes are completely late. Completely late. And then your sage dies because the smokes weren't at heaven yet. Okay. So smoke timing is, needs a lot of work. Uh, let's see, not paying attention to yeah. team pushing. This kind of builds off the awareness issues and a lot of examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and alongside like smoke timing, your smoke so 
too late because maybe you're not paying attention to your team pushing or your team is like pushing into site and you're too busy doing something else. Yeah. Okay, playing too passive while your team is pushing and making plays. This goes again goes back to not paying attention to your team's pushing. Well, maybe there's something wrong with just like awareness in general. Maybe you're too tunnel visioned on your crosshair or whatever. Yeah, too tunnel vision. I'm trying yeah. to work on that. Maybe you're not looking at the minimap enough. Maybe you're not listening to sound cues or things happening around you. Yeah, and just yeah. awareness issues. Number five, no awareness issues in, in general. Too often, this, you're not really paying attention to things happening either on the map or even around you. Yeah. So these are the five major things that hmm. you work on these, you'll see the biggest benefits. For the minor ones, sometimes that you're not really fully kitted when when Brim's utility is, is generally pretty pretty cheap, except for the Mali. Like 100 credits yeah. for smokes, 100 credits for, for Stim Beacon. That's like really cheap and brings huge value. At least when you use it correctly. The, so many times that uh, you, you do a stim picking, which is great. You stim, but there's also sometimes where the stim is not available because you didn't buy it. Yeah. But I, I did really like that many times that you stim correctly and then you stim when your team is about to engage. That I really liked. Or you, you stim when your team is about to take space. Like for example, when your team is like... Uh, the team is here. I guess this is a good example. You see Arena's taking the fights, and you're like, oh, I need the stimmer. Great, I love it. She entries, and you, she stim, Sage is stim, Jet's about to be stim, perfect. Love it. It's very rare that Brims actually do this correctly. Now, like, everyone is stims. The only problem now is just smoke, smoke's timing. I think stim beacon's very, very underrated for Brimstone, I would say. Like, it can easily make you with any 1v1 if your team, like, goes in. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Stim beacon is probably one of the best abilities in the game. It's basically, you can turn your whole team into a Reina ult, minus the overheal. And minus the, the dismiss. Okay, so, I think smoke while moving, possibly while you... One reason why you're you're too slow in your smoke timing is because you're you're not moving while you're you're smoking. For so example, here here we're looking at ramps, is pointless. Here we just hug this corner. But while the smoke is happening, we can just like move for our team, so that the smokes are going down, and we can like be useful and trade people immediately. Imagine if we were moving with our team while while our iPad was open. Maybe we could trade out the the sage. Maybe Maybe like immediately peak heaven. So try to get used to because you, you don't have to stand still. Like you're not the uh, you're not Ashra, right? You don't have to go into the Ashra view or whatever to put down stars. You can move while smoking. Yeah. Same thing with Omen. Omen can move while he's smoking, so he can be mobile. Yeah. So as soon as the yeah. smokes are sent, you can be useful like immediately. Mm. So yeah, try to sm smoke while, mo while moving. So smoke you can, while. yeah, maximize your mobility. I didn't make that yeah. habit even when I had Omen for some reason. I don't know why. I was an Omen one for <clears> ninety hours. <laughs> I mean, it does take some getting used to because like, yeah, while you're moving, you're also moving the minimap, which then means you have to like do a little bit of tracking while while you're trying to play smoke, so it does become a little bit difficult. Yeah. But yeah, try to get in the habit of, of, of moving because it's a huge benefit to, to be able to move while you're placing utility. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, smoke before your team peaks the angle that you're smoking. Here we just had an example where like Sage died because you smoke fast enough. This ties into the smoke timing. Uh, be quiet when your team is being quiet. This only happened a couple of times, but sometimes when, when you were your team was like walking through A, but then you stomped, or somebody stomped, and that gave away, like, the enemies, you know, like, let the enemies know that you, you guys are A. Yeah. And rotation through mid is much faster than rotation through CT. The only time you should rotate through CT is if you really need to be safe in your rotations. Or yeah. uh, if, you're, if you're not able to rotate through mid because you're there's no sage ball or you don't have any presence at mid you don't have anyone controlling mid for you but if you do have a sage ball and you know in a more extreme example if you do have control of a heaven for example 
then you don't have to worry about like if you voted rotated through mid if, if you lost control of a heaven and then you rotated through mid and you find yourself stuck in ropes well that's not going to happen if you have mid control and you have a heaven control so yeah. being fast in your rotation is much more important than being safe in your rotation yeah okay and uh comms can be better more specific yeah, sometimes yeah. i had to work on that Try and get to get to the habit of crucial call outs. Yeah. Try and get to the habit of calling everything that you see. You could say smokes yeah. A, you could say jet smokes A, you could say one one heaven, two heaven, three heaven, or three plus, many or many, or at least three. Like those all like very specific call outs as opposed to just saying like couple A or the enemy is A. Right? That could be one, yeah. it could be two, it could be three, it could be five, who knows? And then all as well as like try to calm utility it's less important now but becomes more and more important in higher elo where like your team can drastically change the way that they play if they know that the enemy does not have certain utility so for example if if they know that the enemy random does not have elu flashes like she already burned both her flashes on like a previous entry or whatever then they can like play more aggressive against her Likewise, if they're playing yeah. against like a, a breach and breach already spent both his flashes, then like then they know immediately that they don't have to like worry about a sudden flash coming from a breach, for example. Yeah. Let's see. And then the last one is uh, abuse the enemy team for not having any smokes or controllers. And then the best way to do that is to funnel the enemy team into your team's operators as much as possible. Like abuse the operator. The only way for them to like get around the operator is this, is if they flash you, which they only have two random flashes, or they smoke okay. you off, which they have zero smokes. I mean, they have okay. jet smokes, they have cypher smokes, but in an example here, you know, so like a, what was it like this round maybe? It was like the last round where we were on defense. This this one, right? This is defense. Oh, actually, it was before the overtime. Because before the overtime, you had tons of money, you could have bought whatever you wanted. Overtime. So that one. This is around here. So this is a perfect example. You, can, you have the luxury of buying any gun that you want, times two. So you can buy an operator, and you can buy a vandal. You can play this long range angle from screens, like you're originally planning, with an operator, instead of a vandal. And then, if they do manage to take sight, which is unlikely because you have, if you have operator, they can't really push through through sight anymore because they don't have smokes to deal with you. So the only way they're gonna get to sight is if they kill you or something like that. Then yeah. you abuse this by with an operator, and then if you need to, you drop the operator for the vandal and then you play retake. So for example, if you held, uh, solo held this with an operator, which is perfectly perfectly feasible. Then you could tell your jet, tell your random, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll anchor A, just go rotate mid, rotate B, whatever. And then yeah. when it does become time for a B hit, like the, all five of them are spotted, garage or whatever, then you drop the operator, pick up the vandal, play retake with the vandal. So this is okay. all like all about abusing the enemy team for not having certain utility, not having smokes. And also um, funneling the enemy team into your team's operator. So there's a couple of rounds where like your jet was playing a heaven. You want to encourage them to go into jet's point of view. Like jet was a heaven peeking into into a uh, e lobby or whatever, e main. You want to encourage them to go into jet's point of view. You don't want to smoke jet off. You don't want to molly the enemy team off and encourage them to go back or encourage them to go up ramp. You want to encourage yeah. them to go into jet as much as possible. So basically funnel them. That's yeah. the job of the controller. Right. Exactly. So what I should have done, I should have just smoked ramps and make them come through AMA. Yeah, you, that could be a good option too, yeah. You smoke ramps and where, where Vena is right now, she can like solo hold that smoke. Well, yeah. you encourage the enemy team to go to site, which goes walks right past through uh, Jet's point of view for op. Right? So these are the notes that I have. Any questions so far? Uh, no questions so far. I would say 
Oh wow, it feels kind of, it's harsh but it's much needed because mm-hmm. I knew like how like you know how many mistakes I'm making nowadays. Yeah, I think overall you did you actually did pretty well. There's like many one yeah, This was one of my like... worst matches actually recently. Oh really? Yeah. Like my pre- recent games were pretty good. I tried to you know focus on more stimming the team and I learned like how to do the heaven smoke properly. Yeah. So just I just need just I just wanted to get used to like how to attack properly. Like my attack was not very good at all. Hmm. I'd say like on attack, try to pay attention to what your team is trying to accomplish, and think about what you mm-hmm. can do to help them accomplish that. And this yeah. kind of ties into like smoke placements and smoke timings. There's too many times where like your team is trying to take control of mid, but because you're not paying attention, then they try to contest mid without the smoke going down on ropes. And then they get punished for it because maybe there's an operator there or they fight a 2v1 or something happens. So, Project. yeah, don't think too much about like any solo plays that you can make. As a controller, just think about what plays your team is trying to make and then think about what you can do to help them. Project. Mm. Yeah. So, I, I would yeah. say it all boils down to a lot of game sense issue. Yeah. And just positioning. Game sense positioning, yeah. Hmm. Got it. Thank you so much, uh, Mingo. Yeah. I think. Actually, means a lot knowing about all these mistakes. If you improve huh. your awareness, I think as soon as you do that, you're proving, your timing is going to improve like huge, immensely. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times where you do make the right decision, but you're just too slow because you didn't aware, you weren't aware of certain things. Like for example, mm-hmm. when when the Reyna had was she pushed the lobby, got two kills, spike is down, but you're still walking like like you're scared or something, until like ten yeah. seconds later, then you realize oh it's actually clear. Then you you whip out your knife and you run like you're supposed to. Mm. So, There's a lot of tunnel visioning going on. Yeah. Just thinking of one thing and just completely forget about the other. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, if you, oh, if you want Thank some you. more uh, reviews in the future, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again, you know. Yeah, no problem. No, but actually, yeah. I'll head out for now, you know, time to eat lunch. So, is, mm. is, it, is it like late night for you? Yeah, it's uh, almost 1 a.m. here. Pacific. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sorry for taking lots of your time, but... I thank you for this amazing watch review. I think it's way better than I would like I would have ever done. Yeah, no problem. Really appreciate it. A uh, quick right. thing for the Bye-bye. person who just joins. Uh, did you have any questions yeah. or you just want to stay stay quiet? I was just listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. He was in a skating rink apparently. <laughs> yeah, he's like in a concert or something. Yeah, he's a bit chilling. All right. All right. Have a head out. Bye, right. Mingo. Cool. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye.